All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at implementing our user profile page as well as our edit profile page. So as you can see, we're at slash index and we've added a new hyperlink. So the value of profile. Now how we have this hyperlink set up, that is the handler is going to go ahead and check to see if we're logged in. If we're not, it's going to go ahead and send us back to the login page. But if we are logged in, it's going to go ahead and send us to our profile page. Since we are already logged in, we're going to go ahead and click on that. It should take us to our profile page. As you can see, we got our name, our email, our created at, and our email verified. Notice that when I click on these fields, I am not able to change any of the values in those. That is by design, and I'll show you how we did that with our HTML. So we do want to make some changes. So we're going to click edit. And now we can change these fields. So let's just add a one to the end of it to show that it has that we can change it. Now notice this has a current password field. If someone was to come up to our computer and we didn't have this requirement, someone else could change our password, you know, say if we didn't lock our PC or something. So uh, real important, since we're making major changes, you want to make sure that you have that we force them to enter the current password. Uh, we also have a new password and confirm password. These don't have to be entered. If they want to change their password, they can do that, but they are not required. So let's go ahead and put in the current password. And Okay, so we're going to go ahead and change the name and the password. All right. So it says your profile has been updated. And as you can see, we added a one to the name and it is there. And of course, it doesn't show the password for security reasons, but let's go ahead and make sure that this has changed in the database. So this, we should see a one added to Carlton. And since we changed the password, the password hash should change as well. So I'm going to go ahead and run this select statement. There we go. Username has changed as well as the password hash. So let's go ahead and take a look at our code. Okay, we're going to be dealing with these paths here, account slash profile, account slash edit, and account slash edit slash verify. So everything uh, account related, um, I'm pushing through the slash account path just so it's easier to look at the path and understand, you know, hey, this is account related. Account related. Uh, anyway, so the account slash profile path is going to be handled by our account profile handler. And of course, we're using our middleware to check for authentication. So let's go ahead and go to go take a look at that handler. Okay. So we're using Gorilla Sessions. We're going to go ahead and get our session. Then we're going to go ahead and inside the values field, uh, which is map, we're going to go ahead and grab the user ID and we're going to go ahead and return that. And we're going to use that to select um, all of our user data from the database. So that way we can populate uh, those fields. Because you know, when we get done, we're going to go ahead and execute this profile to HTML. And as you can see in each one of these fields, we had, you know, username, email, you know, we were uh, populating those fields uh, with that data. So we're using uh, select by ID. So this is just a, this is a method on our user data type, and it's going to return all of our, our data from the database. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And it's just a simple, uh, select uh, MySQL select statement. So select, we're going to select everything where the ID is equal to, and we're putting our ID into db. You know, our db.query, we're using our statement, our ID. Since we're just returning one row, we're going to use query row, that particular method. And then we're going to go ahead and scan each one of those. And if we have an error, we're going to return an error. But hopefully, since hopefully everything runs fine, and we're going to be looking for error equal to nil, um, you know, since error doesn't have a value at the beginning, it's just going to remain hopefully nil. Uh, but anyway, let's go back to that. So if error is not equal to nil, we have a problem. Then we're going to go ahead and change the user message to where 
We'll just say, hey, there was an issue displaying profile information. And we're just passing in uh, TD, which is for uh, template data. And it's since you only can pass in one thing for your data, for your template data, a map is just really useful in that respect. For instance, with uh, edit profile, when we're using this one, not only are we passing in our user message, but we're also passing in user, and we can access anything in the that map. You know, for instance, our user message, we can access it with dot user message, or for user dot user, and that will give us the ability to then get access to those fields on that. Um, anyway, let's go back to here. But hopefully everything is fine. Um, but if there was a problem, we'll send them back to the login page. Um, you know, just a fail safe in case uh, the authentication uh, middleware doesn't catch it. Uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and execute our template, hand it our you know response writer, our template called profile.html, and when we parse those templates, uh, it's, you know, it just gives it the name of the file as the template name, and we're passing in user. So anyway, let's go ahead and assume that you know, all of that ran uh, correctly. So if it's displaying our profile.html page and we've inserted our user data. And let's say someone wants to edit, so they're going to hit submit on that button. And then it's going to take the action slash account slash edit. And if we go back Take a look at that path. That's going to run our account edit handler. And this is going to be going to be pretty similar to the one above. Um, of course, now we're not running you, when we execute. We're not using the profile.html. Now we're using the edit profile.html page, which is similar but a little bit different. Um, one th thing to take note of. On the profile that edge HTML, since we're just showing the profile information, we had read only for each one of these inputs, and that is why we were unable to change any of those fields. Now, edit profile, on the other hand, for instance, with name, there is no read only, so we can we were able to change that. Now, on a couple of these, for instance, at uh, the created at, we still have the read only because well, we don't want, you know, we don't we're not allowing the user to be able to change that. Um, email verified, we're not allowing them to change that there either because obviously we want to make sure uh, if they haven't verified their email, they need to go to the, uh, find their verification email, you know, click that link and it will verify. So, anyway, back to the code. Now, if, oh, sorry. So, that if they make whatever changes they want to it, and they hit submit, it's going to take the action slash account edit slash verify. which is going to be handled by our account edit verification handler. And we're going to do a couple things uh, with the account edit verification handler. So uh, one of the big things is, like we said with the password, we're going to go ahead and check the password uh, passed in via the form against the hash that was saved in the database. Uh, we're all, you know, if they've made changes to the name, email, or password, we're, we're going to go ahead and check the criteria of all those. So I'm not going to go in great detail on those because that's going to be very similar to that in the register, uh, register new user video that we made. And of course, we're also, if they, they don't have to enter a new password and confirm password, but if they do, those do need to match to confirm that the user did indeed uh, put in the password they intended to change it to. Otherwise, if they make a mistake, then it's just a lot of hassle. So, and we're, we're going to go ahead and create our new map for TD for template data. And that's going to allow us to pass in, like we said earlier, um, we can have, you know, one of those keys can be for user message to get the data there, and the other one can be for just our user. So we're going to be using both of those. Now we're going to have uh, two of our two user data types um, 
One of them is going to be old user, which is going to represent the data that we're pulling from the database. Um, like I said, we're going to check the uh, password hash in the database versus the password passed in via the form. And then we're also going to have another user for new user, which is going to represent the, the data that we're pulling from the form. So again, we're going to go ahead and uh, grab our session, handle it if there's an error. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save the ID. We're going to select from the database uh, all that information. And then we're also, when we're creating our new user, we're just going to go ahead and save uh, old user into new user because there's still some of that information that we're not going to be grabbing from the form values. For instance, uh, you know, the created at as well as the, the email verified. So, but we're going to go ahead and save over username, email, password, new password, and then new password and confirm password. Uh, these two are separate, but we're still going to check to make sure they're the same. Uh, anyway, and we're also going to, on our table data, you know, for the map for key, we're going to save the value of old user there. If everything goes through all of our confirmations and checks, and we're going to go ahead and just, you know, at the end of it, we're going to change that to new user, and we'll pass that into our template. But uh, we'll just put this in here, assuming that maybe we'll run into uh, one of the criteria isn't met or, or something of that effect. Uh, anyway. So our first check here, we're going to check for changes. So if, say, the user hits the update button and no changes were made, we don't want to do anything. So let's, you know, they're going to check to see if the username has changed, if the email um, has changed, or if the new pass, you know, if uh, new password, if that's empty, then we're going to assume that they just hit the update button. We're going to send them right back to the edit profile, the HTML page, and just pass in that template data and it's just going to go ahead and display the same thing if that's incorrect. You know, those uh, fields will still, username, create at, are still going to be uh, populated. Then we're going to verify uh, user's current password. So this is just a method on new user. So we saved over old user and new user. We had the password hash, which we're going to be using. And we also have, which is from the database, and we also have the password that we got from the form. And so we're just going to check to make sure that, yes, this person has the correct password and they are, you know, they have access, they should have access to this. So anyway, so we're going to use the bcrypt compare hash and password to make sure um, they have the correct uh, password for the hash that we've had saved in the database. We're going to check for an error. And we're also going to check to see if they're active. If they're not an active user, they need to verify their email address. And then we're going to return. So um, error is, you know, from the start is set to nil. If, if we don't change that error to something new, that's good news. That means everything ran successfully. So if there was an error, we'll handle that error. We'll send them back to the login page. But um, let's go ahead and move on down to new user. So like I said, we have old user saved in a new user. We saved over the values from the form. Added old user to our template data. Oh, sorry. I guess I was down here. Uh, we also need to confirm the uh, new password and confirm password are the same. If they're not, that would be a problem. We'll send them back to the edit profile page if that's an issue. Um, like I said, I'm going to run through some of this uh, fairly quick because it's going to be uh, very similar to the uh, regist register new user video. Uh, we're going to check the criteria for the new user. We're also going to check to see if a new password has been entered, making sure these are not empty. And so if they've entered these, that means they, you know, they're attempting to create a new password. So we're going to, and the, we have some code up above that has already checked to make sure that they are the same. Uh, anyway, so new user dot password is going to be equal to new password. Again, remember that we've already checked to make sure they had the correct uh, password already. So we're passing in that new password. Uh, we're going to go ahead and check the password criteria. If that's if it's not fine, we'll handle that. If not, if it is fine, we'll keep on moving on down. 
And since we're all of our, our checks on the password have you know the criteria and it is the correct password, if they if they made it this far, they've passed both of those already. So we're going to use bcrypt to generate a new uh, we got a new hash for our password, so we can save it into the database. And if that runs fine, then we're going to go ahead and save that into our new user. So later in our handler, if everything goes fine, we'll go ahead and run the dot update method that's going to go ahead and update it in the database. We're also going to go ahead and check that the email is valid. We're also going to check to see if that domain is active that that email is on. And if everything else is ran fine, like I said, we're going to go ahead and run the dot update method and this is just going to update everything in the database uh, for that user. And being if that ran fine, then we're going to go ahead and save new user uh, in our uh, template data map. So that way when we when we populate this, uh, we get the updated say like here with the name uh, Carlton one instead of Carlton. So we get all the updated fields. And we're going to go ahead and change the user message. You know, so for when this key, it's going to get this, you know, we're going to get this value. And as you can see, that's where your profile has been updated. So everything ran fine, which is good. And it's also important that if a change is made, been made to the profile, never hurts to send an email just letting the user know like, hey, an update has occurred. And so that way, it'd be a red flag for them if they were not the person who made that change, which the other person, you know, more likely would have had to have stolen their password somehow, but at least that would give them a heads up like, hey, uh, someone's changed it, it wasn't me. But anyway, we've updated the send email to where we just have to give a string for the subject and some eight, you know, a string of HTML for the body. Uh, this makes it a little bit easier before, I believe, I was having to put in uh, the new line uh, characters and so this just does that for you to make it just a little more reliable a little bit easier to use and then we're going to just uh, check to see if it sends that email if that works okay or not and then finally we're going to go ahead and execute our template pass in our writer pass in our edit.html uh, template and then pass in our td template data uh, variable so anyway, like I said, uh, a lot of similarities to the, uh, the registration process, a lot of checks. Um, but anyway, I hope that was helpful. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if Please like and subscribe. And uh, every little bit helps, so much appreciated. I'll see you guys in the next one.